So we're going to do dry brush blending this time, uh, also known as scumble glaze, which you probably heard it's an interior decorating technique as well. Um, so I've got a totally dry colour blocked vase. Uh, I keep this totally dry. I'm not going to use any water. Um, so between colours, I do. I, I'm going to have to keep the same brush or use several brushes as I'm going. So I am going to start with. Uh, the middle colour as well. So I'm loading up my brush. Has it still got all the um, big tar in it? It has, but I don't think you'd need to use that. You could probably just use a tube consistency, maybe with a tiny bit of retarder or flow improver in it. So loading up the brush and blotting that. Seems like a waste of paint. You get a really nice technique from this, a finish from this. So it's a glaze, you're still seeing the colour underneath, you're just subtly editing on top of that glaze if you like. So circular move, move motions with the paintbrush to blend that paint out. Very near the base colour, though, isn't it? Yeah. Said it's the so, colour, so. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to build it up without too much contrast. Because there's not a huge amount of contrast on this. There's no change of colours, is there? So I want to create a very blended look. So I'm going to go with a colour very similar to the, the base colour. Although it is a different colour to the colour I used. I used a much lighter orange for the initial colour of the base. Possibly a bit too much colour that time because you want it to keep it to be able to keep it as dry and as smooth as possible so it doesn't create um, texture. That's created a bit too much texture. You can see how it doesn't work so well. Could be because the paint's a bit wet too. So soft circular movements for this particular technique. So you see I'm sort of working in my fairly warm colours, trying to keep my cool colours separate because I know as soon as they go on they might make it muddy. So unlike the other technique I'm trying to keep them fairly separate. Try and keep it the amount on your brush um, minimal, so you can increase the pressure and get a better blend. See, I'm start, it's starting to get very textured for me. Do you so, think that's because of the colour? I think it's because my paint's already wet. Yeah. So you want to avoid any moisture in them, really. And if you do put um, retarder on them, in them, you'd have to mix it round. Mm. Yeah, again, I think it's all a bit moist. So, but it gives you an idea of how you'd approach it.
you might wait a little while between different colours. If you've got real contrast, like I have here, I might wait till that's dry and then put another layer on. So yeah, it hasn't worked particularly well because of the retarder. Mm -hmm. So I'd keep the paints as dry as possible. But that's an example of how you might approach the dry brush technique. You can keep going over it, of course, to really sort of blend it out. But then you don't want to start pushing the paper around or the colour underneath. Mm -hmm. So we're going on to a completely different one. Uh, we're going to use uh, glaze this time. So we're just using it, uh, the glaze medium, to blend the different colours. Uh, so this time we've used water with it. We want to put those um, dry brushes into the water because they're sable and they might dry out really quickly otherwise and ruin your brushes. So lots of glaze medium. I'm going to mix that with my colours here, might need a little extra colour. Don't need a, ter uh, a lot of pigment though because you're using it very diluted to make the different glazes. So it's, it, it's fairly diluted. Does that glaze also act as a retardant? Yes, it will stop it from drying so quickly and it's quite viscous, which will help. Yeah. It looks like you're going for a mid colour again. So how is this different from wet on wet? It's still it's transparent and okay. translucent, sorry. Uh, yeah, I'm sort of starting in with a mid colour and just using lots of. I think this works quite well for glassware. In fact, if I was to, going to choose a technique for this particular um, subject matter, this is probably the one I would choose. Well, um, it's not a medium, so it's just it's just a generic glaze medium, oh, which. Okay. Um, will be slightly glossier than the paint's normal finish. Okay. And it would definitely be glossier than if you used water to make your glaze. Yeah. Um, the reason we'd use a glaze medium is because it's a bit more viscous, it doesn't tend to run. Um, yeah. Also, it's got that longer time, more workability. Mm. Can you just paint that on over the top after it's dry and it's there? Or would that not really achieve anything? I don't think that would achieve much. You're better off just doing that with a, a medium. So yeah. you had a mat, if you want to mattify or gloss the yeah. finish, then you'd add that on. Or choose a particular varnish for your painting. So you could go for a matte gloss or satin varnish. Yeah, so this one we can see works a lot better with the subject matter than the scumble glazing did, the dry brush glazing. Uh, so lots of translucent layers. So you're still seeing some of that original colour, but you're using the glaze in different sort of intensities, in different colours, to create tone and depth. And obviously, more layers of glaze, the more opaque it gets. But each time they're fairly thin and diluted. So you see you'd build it up that way with your, your glazes. And there's a nice sort of sheen to it which gives you the, the effect of the glassware. More glaze medium. So you, you know, you're diluting the paint a fair amount. That's what makes it different to using wet into wet. Well, you're not diluting the paint at all. You're just increasing its working time.
You could do, yes. You could do lo lots of layers of glazes, which would build up. It's quite good for skin. I think this will work nicely with these uh, magenta colours here because it's still translucent so you can see some of that orange colour underneath. There. So there's three different, that, that's uh, glaze. So that's glaze. I think that's worth, that that's the best blending technique for this particular object. That, the wet into wet makes it look too textured, doesn't it? <clears throat> it makes it almost look like it could be pottery. Yeah. yeah. And this makes it look, a bit like, again, <clears throat> too textured, almost like it's painted. Mm. I think that, you know, so you, you choose the right blending approach for the subject matter that you're using. So it's no good saying, oh, I've decided I'm going to uh, use wet into wet blending for my whole painting today. If it's not appropriate, you wouldn't use it. So, that's so what do you think is the best one for skin? Or does it depend on depends what the Depends on you? What, what the skin is like, what the, the, the age of the skin, the, the light that the, the skin is in. Uh, so it really does depend. Uh, I like this the, this technique for skin, but the, these two are quite. This is quite nice for more dramatic lighting. Uh, whereas glazes are often used for the skin on the face because of the translucent quality. So I think you have to yeah, choose depending on your unique yeah. image or your approach to to that particular painting. Anyway, so let's get on with our work and I'll come round and see and help you with your techniques. If anyone wants to try anything new, then you can yeah, try a bit of glazing. If you're going to glaze, you need to glaze over the top of the painting. 